Welcome back to another episode of Doing It With AI. I'm your host, Daniel LeMay, and today we're gonna to jump straight into a demo because I wanna show you what you're gonna learn in this video. So let's take a quick look. Here we have a Canvas app, and we've connected to the OpenAI services via the API in a custom connector. So let's take a quick look at what it can do. Um, again, no flows involved in this process. So first thing I wanna show you is the image generation. So I could say something like, you know, Abraham Lincoln, with a dog in a field of flowers reading the New York Times. Then it's going to call the API through our custom connector and it's going to return a couple images. There you have it. Lincoln with his dog and some flowers. Or how about this? Text completion. Give me a fact about Cincinnati. Cincinnati is the birthplace of the ice cream sundae. Hm, had no idea. Or maybe we push the boundary a little bit further. What about code conversion? How about converting PowerFX to Python? Now, does that work? Probably not. But point is, we're tapping into that API, and that's what I'm gonna teach you how to do today. We're gonna to build the entire thing from scratch, the custom connector, the Canvas app. We're gonna learn about how to authenticate to the connector and make everything kind of work together seamlessly so that you can also build flows with this custom connector as well. So, stay tuned. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is head over to platform.openai.com. And if you don't already have an account with OpenAI, you're gonna to need to create one. Uh, you can use Microsoft as the identity provider if that makes the most sense. Like if you have an Office 365 account or something like that that you wanna use just to keep everything kind of consistent. But anyway, you're gonna to have to sign up for OpenAI. And once you have that, when you log in, you land at this dashboard screen. So like I said, platform.openai.com. And so you end up here and uh, there's a bunch of different things that you can do here. It kind of gives you some ideas about how to build, you know, using their APIs, build applications. And so what I'm gonna do is just kind of point you toward the very first option, which is text completion. So text completion is the idea of like, it's kind of what ChatGPT does, right? Where you, you give it a prompt and it returns some text back. So if you look at the example that it gives you here, it says write a tagline for an ice cream shop and then the API is gonna return something like we serve up smiles with every scoop, great. Very cool, so that's the idea behind that. If you look down here on the left under guides, there is several other models that you can tap into and other endpoints. So you have text completion, code completion, image generation, embeddings, et cetera, et cetera. So not all of these are gonna be you know, specific endpoints. Some of them are gonna be more guides on how to do integrations. Um, but anyway, that material is there. And then most importantly of all, down here at the bottom of this navigation blade is the API reference. And we're gonna be using this when we construct our custom connector and the methods and actions that are involved in that custom connector are gonna come uh, out of that API reference. So as we dive in, this is gonna be a really helpful guide for us. So at this point, I think what we can do is take a look quickly at how to generate an API key. So once you're logged in here, if you go up to the top right hand corner and find your little letter that matches your name is probably what it's gonna look like. Um, but if you come down here and you say view API keys, you can see I've already got an API key that's generated. If you don't have one, uh, you'll have to generate one. But I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one for this purpose. And of course, by the time this video goes live, none of these keys are gonna work anymore. So don't try to get clever. Um, <laughs> Not that you would, just saying. Uh, but I'm mean, anyway, I'm gonna hit create new secret key. And so it generates this API key for us. This is how we're gonna authenticate our uh, custom connector. And so you're gonna wanna copy this API key and put it somewhere where you can easily access it. Because once this screen goes away, you're not gonna have access to this full key anymore and you're gonna have to generate a new one. I'm gonna paste this over somewhere where I can hold on to it. And then I'm gonna click okay. So now I've got my key 
And you can see here, it's kind of interesting. It tells you when you made it, but then it also tells you the last time it was used. So you can see I was doing some testing here. And it was actually this morning was the last time it was used and it knows that. So again, I'm just using the free versions of these tools. You may have heard that Azure now offers some open API services and I haven't got a chance to play with those yet, but as soon as I do, I'm gonna make a video about it and how to use those. That's how we're gonna make our connector today. Maybe we'll do another video at a later time where we talk about making a connector to integrate with those Azure services. Um, or by that point in time, you know, Microsoft might put out a connector for us to integrate with those services, but time will tell. So, now that we've got our API key, let's go over to the Power Platform portal. Okay, so here we are at uh, make.powerapps.com. I've logged in. I'm in the environment I want to be in where I want to create my custom connector. And so over here on the left hand side of the screen, I'm going to expand the Dataverse uh, navigation blade here and I'm going to go down to custom connectors. Okay, and here's a list of my custom connectors. You can actually see my test one right there. There's a couple different ways you can tackle this, right? You can make a Postman collection of the methods that you want to use in your connector or the actions that you're going to want to have in your connector. Uh, and then you can import that collection here. And most of the time it's pretty good about getting everything right. Um, and we may end up going down that road. This video is going to be very kind of iterative in how we approach this solution. Just we're going to find out what works and what doesn't. If you have an open API file, some APIs will provide an open API file which has all of the methods, all of the endpoints listed out for you in Swagger or what they call open API now. It used to be called Swagger. It's basically just a YAML file that explains all of the different things that you can do with the API and it very quickly lets you build a custom connector out of those. So that would be an option, except that OpenAI does not have an open API file that we can download. So we're gonna to have to create our own in this case. Um, create from an Azure service. So in the future, right, there may be the ability to point to the OpenAI services in Azure and create a connector from those services. And that's a, that's a topic I'm gonna to explore in a later video once that gets a little bit more generally available. Right now I can't even get it in my Azure subscription. So for this example though, we're just gonna create from blank. I'm gonna show you kind of the most difficult way, hopefully this is the most difficult way that you would have to tackle this problem. So you're gonna be prepared for any, any situation. We're creating from blank, new connector name, Open AI YouTube Demo. Let me continue. And so if you're not familiar with the custom connector interface, there's a ton of videos online, blogs, tutorials on how to set some of this stuff up. I'm gonna make some assumptions here that you already have some familiarity, but again, we'll go through some of this together as well. So the first page is just general information. You can give your custom connector an icon. So in my case, I actually happen to have a icon for OpenAI or GPT-3. So I'm gonna go find that real quick. Okay, so this is actually the chat GPT icon, but you know what? I'm good with that, I'm gonna roll with that. Uh, can give the connector a description. I'm gonna hold off on that for a second. And then down here we see scheme, HTTPS, host, yada, yada, yada. What's really interesting is that we know that custom connectors are written uh, behind the scenes as YAML, and they're written in a certain way that they used to call Swagger, which they now call Open API, all right? This again is a channel about using AI technologies to make life easier, right? So what if we went over to ChatGPT really quick and we asked it to help us with that? Instead of trying to go through the process of manually creating all of these actions, why don't we just see if ChatGPT can write us the swagger that we need and then we can just paste it in and see what happens. This is a theory, we don't know if it'll work or not, but let's try this out. If we switch over to ChatGPT what we can do is we can ask it to give us the YAML. So we can say, write a YAML definition for the OpenAI API. Let's just see what it does with that. Okay, so it's saying it can't provide me that because it's proprietary information. And then it says, okay, we can get an API key, make sure you have a tool that can do requests like curl, yada, yada, yada. It tells us, hey, you know, use Postman. I agree, I agree. 
Okay, I'm gonna tell it to stop generating. Let's try a different prompt because this is a really interesting example of how ChatGPT might be able to give you the answer that you want if you prompt it in the right way. So let's just see what we can do. Um, create a YAML description of the OpenAI API. Okay, try reloading. Let's just create a new chat, ask it there. Okay, so now different prompt, right? And it's gonna start spitting out a result which is really interesting considering it told us that it was proprietary information and it wasn't allowed to give us that. Again, this is, you know, part of getting better at using tools like ChatGPT is understanding the fact that it's not perfect and your prompt is everything. So what prompt you give it is going to make a difference. So, okay, it's typing out a bunch of stuff here, endpoints generate text, URL, models, slash yada 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 i mean i can tell straight away that this isn't right right like the url here i know for text generation um, this might be one or maybe an old version but we need the completions url and it shouldn't be called endpoints it should be called paths so why don't we kind of switch up our prompt again a little bit and see if we can get it to dial it in let's say what worked last time? Create a YAML description of the OpenAI API. How about create a YAML description of the OpenAI API that includes only the completions endpoint and is designed for a power platform custom connector. See what it can do with that. Okay, it's starting down this road again. Okay, base URL is right this time api.openai.com slash v1 authentication api key yes uh, endpoints completions okay url is still wrong there but that might be an easy fix okay parameters prompt uh, name in i'm not sure what that is number maybe max tokens temperature top p frequency penalty presence penalty i know a lot of those aren't required uh, just by my memory of looking at the api reference docs Okay, now it's, it's describing the responses of that action. Successfully generated completions. Internal server error. Okay, so this is, you know, this looks better. So what can we do with this? Well, let's copy it. And what we're gonna do is take it over to our custom connector. So here in the custom connector designer, I'm gonna come up here and click on my Swagger editor. And I can see the Swagger that's already here that's basically empty because we haven't created any actions or anything yet for this connector. But the idea was maybe ChatGPT can do some of that work for us. So let's see, if we paste in the Swagger that ChatGPT wrote for us, does it work here in the custom connector interface? Okay, unable to render. So I think that has a lot to do with this top piece up here, right? It says that uh, we have to indicate a valid Swagger or Open API version field. Supported fields are Swagger 2.0 and those that match Open API 3.0.in, for example. Why don't we go back to ChatGPT and ask it to give us the correct version of that, right? I'm just going to tell it, you forgot to define the Swagger version in your previous code. See what it does with that. Here's the corrected YAML description of the OpenAI API completions endpoint. Notice the very first thing it put on there now is Swagger 2.0. So I have a feeling that it's going to be much happier with that. Okay, and interestingly, it's creating an entire new uh, path URL and thing and whatnot here. So again, using chat, chat GPT is not going to just crank it out perfectly for you every time. You're going to have to iterate with it. And we talk about that a lot in one of my other videos. I'm going to link, uh, it'll probably be up here actually, a, uh, a link for you to one of my other videos where I talk about using chat GPT and Copilot kind of in tandem 
to uh, help with writing code. All right, so it's done. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna take this back over and s just take out what I had in there in the Swagger Editor. I'm gonna put this in instead. Ah, okay. So now it's happy. And if you look here, we have an action. Now, I know that this is the wrong uh, path, right? So right in here, it defines a path to completions. I know that is not the correct path. Actually, we have our base path up here, V1. And what we need this to be is just slash completions. Because if we look back over at the uh, API reference document, we can see here that for completions, right, when we want to create a completion, it's just V1 and then completions. So what I'm going to do is just make that change really quickly in the swagger. And by changing it here in the swagger, it changes it elsewhere in the custom connector designer. Well, so I'm going to pull this off and that's just going to be slash completions. And I'm also going to quickly go back and look at this doc because over here we have an example request. So if I was using Postman, this would give me everything I need to know about hitting this completions endpoint. And I've only got four parameters here, four key value pairs in this request body. Model, prompt, max tokens, and temperature. So if we quickly go back and look at our YAML again, here under the schema, our parameters, there's a lot in here, right? We have prompt, in, max tokens, temperature, et cetera, et cetera. But really all we need is model, prompt, max tokens, and um, temperature. So we have max tokens, it's right there. We have temperature, we have prompt, but what we don't have is model. And we've got some extra stuff too. We've got in, we've got top P, frequency, presence, whatever. I'm gonna pull out what I don't think I need. So I'm gonna come in here and get rid of in. I'm gonna get rid of top P, actually all of these things here, top P, frequency penalty, presence penalty. Let me get rid of all of those. And then what I'm going to add is the model. So I'm just gonna copy prompt and paste this in here. It's gonna tell me I've got an error, but actually what I need is model. So bad indentation of a mapping entry. Okay, sure. Correct that for it. All right, so now we have this, and we could authorize this by putting in an API key and testing, but let's just, uh, let's close the Swagger editor for now, and let's see what that gave us. So one of the things it gave us is the host. That's what we needed. Um, we also needed the base URL. I'm actually gonna pull this trailing slash off and just keep it slash v1 there so cool and also you'll note remember earlier i left the description off that's because i kind of figured that if we got chat gpt to write us the swagger then the description would be included and you can see there it is a machine learning platform that provides access to state of the art ai models okay great so let's go on to security we go down here to the bottom and click next we have API key, so it knew that we needed an API key. Chat GPT was smart enough to give us that. But if we look down here, the parameter label and the parameter name and the location are actually all incorrect. How do I know that? Well, I know that from the API docs. So if we go and look at the authentication piece of the API reference, what it tells us is that all API requests include your API key in an authorization HTTP header. So you need a header with a key called authorization and then you need the word bearer a space and then your api key so this is using a bearer token right and so we need to make some changes to the way that our connector is using and referencing that api key so we go back over here i'm just going to set the author the parameter label to be uh, authorization and then I'm going to put in, I don't know if it's going to let me do this. Let's just see. Um, enter your, enter bearer space your API key. Just so people kind of know um, 
what they're supposed to be putting in there because again the idea of making this custom connector is to allow people to use this connector in building their own solutions so they're going to need some guidance as to what they're being prompted for the first time they try to establish a connection using this connector so for the parameter name i'm going to put in authorization because we know that in the header we need a key value pair uh, authorization and then the bearer token right and the parameter location is not in the query it's in the header so now that we've changed these things I feel okay about going forward we may have to come back and change them later we shall see so let's go over to definition now so chat GPT wrote us um, something it wrote us an action for the completions endpoint but it didn't give it a name so operation ID right here is going to be the name of the action. It's going to be how you reference the action in your Canvas app. It's going to show up in Flow if you use uh, this connector for Flow. So we're going to give this a name, which is just called, let's just call it completions, or let's call it text completion. Okay. And then down here in the request, so if you're not familiar with custom connectors and designing them actions is up here on the left and this is going to be um, all of the, th the th actions that the connector is able to perform right whether those are gets or posts whatever the case may be they're going to show up here and then you're going to define what does the request look like so if it's a git it's going to be very simple it's not going to have a, a payload that you're sending you're just asking for data if it's a post then you're going to have a payload in that in that body that's going out to the API so that it can do work with the information you give it. In our case, right, for the completions endpoint, we know that it needs to be a post call. Well, how do we know that? Again, the API reference is your friend. We go here to completions, create completion, that's what we want to do, and it tells us right here that is a post to this endpoint. So let's take a look at this. We have a post here to this endpoint, but the body only contains one parameter, which is prompt. And so um, that's a little interesting. So let's take a look at that. Okay. So in our prompt, it is required, right? The body, we have max tokens, model, prompt, and temperature. So those are those things that we uh, modified earlier, to, earlier in our swagger. If we quickly look at our swagger editor. These are these things right here. Right. Paths, completions, and we have these properties. So, close our Swagger Editor. Now, what's interesting about this is we have, if we compare this to the docs, right? The docs, they just show an object here, a JSON object with those parameters in it, but they don't call it prompt so we need to see like prompt is prompt is actually inside here we're just gonna have to see what happens with this there's a good chance we're gonna have to go back and tweak the way this works a little bit we may even have to make an entirely new action again chat GPT it helped us with this it helped us get started with this but what it did may not be right and maybe you'd want to take that YAML and throw it over into VS code with copilot maybe you prompt copilot hey Give me a YAML definition for the OpenAI API and see if it gives you a different result. Using these tools where it makes sense, trying out different ones, and just kind of getting you over any hurdles that you may run into as you try to figure these things out, that's kind of the value there. Let's go back here. And I just, you know what? I'm gonna just try to create this now and see what happens. So I go up to hit Create Connector. It's gonna save the custom connector. And then what we're gonna do is go and try to authenticate to that. It's gonna prompt us for an API key when we do that. We've saved our API key in somewhere where we can get to it. All right, so I'm gonna come down here. Now our responses, we don't know if those work yet either. Successfully generated completions, That I mean, that's not what I would expect to see in a 200. I would expect to see a response that looks more like what they show us in the docs. So if we scroll down here on the right for the completions, reference here's what the response should look like it should look more like this so let's just test our connector the way it is and see what it comes up with my guess is that it's just going to give us a 200 back if we can even pass that prompt payload in because i don't think that's right either but let's see what happens
<clears throat> have a drop down up here. If I click that, I can go over to test. And right now, I do not have any connection selected. So I'm going to hit new connection. Okay. And so here is what your user is going to see when they try to connect to this custom connector. There's that label we created. And then in here is where you're going to actually put the value. So you're going to write the word bearer, put a space, and then you're going to paste in that API key that you had uh, copied earlier from the OpenAI platform page, right? Bearer space and then this. So I'm going to hit create. And so what that did was create a connection to the OpenAI YouTube demo um, connector. So I know you probably can't see me, it's right behind me there. So, so now that we have that, we have to navigate back to our custom connector to actually test this. So go to custom connectors, I go and find my connector I was just working on, I'm gonna click edit, and then I'm gonna come down here to test. So if we wanna test this, we need to go look at our reference docs again. What's an example that they do? Well, they use text DaVinci 03 for the model. The prompt is a string. This is a text max token seven temperature zero. So I'm just gonna copy out this model name and paste it in over here. It's the model name. Max tokens we knew was seven, temperature was zero. And for the prompt, I'm gonna say, Tell me something about Shakespeare. And I'm gonna hit test operation. Okay, so <clears throat> actually what ChatGPT gave us, I was skeptical of whether or not that would work. It has worked. So if we look down here in the body, we can see the response. And it actually aligns exactly with what the API doc told us it would. Um, so here I get a choices array and that nested array there is going to be the output that we were looking for. So it says William Shakespeare is widely regarded. Very cool, right? So while we're still here, we know that this text completion endpoint is very likely to work once we get over to our Canvas app. But what if we want to add another endpoint? Like maybe we need uh, like image generation. We want to use that one, right? Let's pop back over to ChatGPT and see if it can help us with that. So now that it's written this for us, create YAML that I can add to your previous answer for the slash, and then we need to get the name of the endpoint. So we go over here to the reference and we go to images. We need this endpoint. So I'm gonna copy that in there and just paste it over here in the chat GPT. Do your previous answer for the slash images slash generations endpoint. see what it comes back with. Okay, here's the YAML code that you can add to the previous answer to include images slash generations endpoint. Really cool, right? I mean, if you didn't know how to do this, which I mean, I don't know how to, I can't sit down and just slam out a bunch of swagger, right? This can really help you get a lot further, a lot faster um, than you might be able to on your own. And what I think is very cool is that working in that custom connector interface is really obnoxious, I think. So being able to just copy and paste Swagger in there and have it kind of do the, all the hard work of clicking through all the different screens and putting in request bodies and all that kind of stuff, having it do all of that, I think is really kind of special. So now we have this new path, right? Images, generations. What I'm gonna do is copy this and I'm gonna head back over to my custom connector and I'm gonna open up that Swagger editor again and I'm gonna find the paths sort of object here, right? Or node, if you want, if you will. And I'm gonna expand that out. And what I can do is, I know that this new path needs to be at the same sort of depth in this YAML file or depth in this schema that the completions endpoint does. So what I'm gonna do is kind of just follow this line down. And when I get down here to the bottom, I'm one indentation in to get to completions. So I'm just gonna tab once and then paste in my additional path for image generation. And as you can see there, it showed up, right? Now we have some other things to address really quickly. I mean, for one, um, if we look at the properties here, we have prompt 
in number of images to generate and size, the size of the images. So if we go back to our API reference doc, how does that align with what OpenAI suggests? It's actually exactly aligned. So in this case, ChatGPT kind of nailed it. Um, it's exactly aligned with the way that this works or the way it's intended to work. And so the response that we're expecting to get back is gonna be an array of, in this data uh, property, you're gonna have an array of URLs. So we're gonna be able to tap into that in the Canvas app and we'll show you how that works. If we go back to our Swagger here, we will go ahead and close the Swagger editor. And then what we're gonna do, it says you must update the connector to test the changes. So I'm gonna hit update connector Okay, and it tells me I have one error in my Swagger, so I need to figure out what that is. Well, let's open the Swagger editor back up, and let's see if we can find an error in here. Now, usually, if you have an error in the Swagger, it will show you where that error lives by highlighting or putting a little, like, a red dot somewhere, and I don't see that. Definition tab for more details. Okay, let's go over to definition. Ah, okay. So at the top here, I got an, an error that said see definition tab for more details. I didn't do that at first because I was ignoring it. I shouldn't have been. I came over to the definition tab. So this drop down, which for you, it may be across the top here. I can show you what I mean. If I shrink that down, you get these tabs, but I've got this font blown up so you guys can see it. But I got a definition I got, um, and I can see my operations. And if you remember, the same thing happened when we put our swagger in for the text completion. It didn't give that action an operation ID, so it doesn't have a name. So we gotta name it. So I'm just gonna call this one generate images. Okay. Now I'm going to hit update connector and it's gonna save the connector uh, with my changes. So what we'll do here is once this saves, we'll go back over to the test section here and we will try to test the images uh, endpoint and see if we can get some images back so if i go up here again i go down to test here's the operations i want to say generate images the number of images to generate one is fine um, and i'll just do 512 by 512 it wants a uh, a pixel count right width by height and then for my prompt i'm going to say um, two giraffes wearing top hats in Times Square. And I'm gonna hit test operation. Now this could take a second. Um, some of these prompts take longer than others. But as you can see here, it worked. And uh, we have again a data property of the response with an array. And then because I only, I told it I only wanted one image it gave me one URL here. So let's just grab this URL and to test to see if it works, let's we'll open a new tab and paste it in there. And sure enough, there's my giraffes wearing top hats in Times Square. So the API is working the way that we would expect it to. So now that we've gotten this far, we can actually go over into our Canvas app and start to build some things with this. Our custom connector is working the way we would expect. So I'm gonna go and just create a new Canvas app from scratch here. We'll just call it OpenAI YouTube App. Okay. So here on this screen, I'm gonna throw a button in. And I think we'll do the image generation endpoint first. So I'm gonna do insert, do a text input. We need something to put our prompt in, right? So I'm gonna put this in, get rid of the default value. And for our button, I'm gonna say generate images is what the button is gonna be called. We'll put a gallery on here so that we can see our images. In fact, why don't we do, let's do a two column gallery of just straight images. And so the other thing we need to do is we need to add our custom connector to the app. So if I come down here to my data and I click add data, if I go to connectors, 
I will see my custom connector in there, my OpenAI YouTube demo. So I'm gonna click that. And I already have a connection established from my account but your users may not, so they're gonna have to go through that process of putting in the bear token, the API key and all that. But that's really it. So I'm gonna click that. Okay, so now the custom connector is in my app. And then for, if I wanna invoke actions against it, it's just like any other data source, right? So the app read the schema of the connector and it knows which actions are available. So for generate images, I'm just gonna say open AI and then you can see here we have dot generate images and dot text completion. So I'm going to choose dot generate images. And then it's showing me up here what my payload needs to look like. You know, outgoing requests to open APIs or open AI's API for generating images, it needs those three parameters, right? Prompt, in for number and size. So if I was a developer and I was making a Canvas app to do this, then I would just hard code the number and the size. Although you could pass in both of those things, let people pick the size from a dropdown, for example, change how many um, images they want to get back. You know, in our case, we have four images here in our gallery or four spots in this first, you know, set of images for our gallery. So maybe what we'll do is um, we'll say we want four images back. But for the prompt, I know that wants to come from this text input box that I created. So the name of that box is text input one. So I'll say text input one dot text. Notice too that it, it needs this uh, open curly brace. And that's because this is a record that we're passing in. So anyway, I want to point that out. So the prompt is that in is going to be uh, four. We're going to hard code that as four because that's what we've got over here in our gallery. And then the size, we're going to hard code that as well at 512 by 512. And that is a string. The size uh, parameter or property is a string. So we'll hard code it as a string here. So the other thing I'll do maybe is reset text input one uh, after I hit the button. And lastly, I want to make a collection out of this. So I'm going to say clear collect coal images. And the response from this call to our custom connector, remember it has a, a property in it called data. And then within that it has URLs. So if I do dot data, interesting. Okay, so it's giving me images. Maybe it's looking directly in that data object to begin with. Very interesting. Um, I'm just gonna choose dot images and we'll play with this and see what happens. Okay, so that's kind of what my call is gonna look like. So let's test this out. If I hit play, I go back up here and maybe I want to do two cows in a meadow with mountains in the background. One cow is playing a tuba and one cow is playing the clarinet. And I'm gonna hit generate images. Now, one thing I didn't do, we're gonna let this finish running. You can see our ants marching up here. I'm going to let this finish running. One thing I did not do was set up the gallery. So let's set that up really quick. Remember, I made a collection called Coal Images. If I pick that, and then I set this image control to be this item dot value, let's see what comes up there. Okay, so I'm not getting anything back. So let's investigate this. Coal Images doesn't have anything in it. Okay. So. What this is telling me is that this images response piece here is not being captured by the custom connector. And so what we need to do is go take a look at that custom connector real quick. So I'm gonna save my app and I'm going to head back over to uh, my custom connector. So I'm gonna go to Dataverse, custom connectors. I'm gonna find my OpenAI YouTube demo and I'm gonna edit it. And what I wanna look at is definition. So on our generate images action, we have our request, which seems to be working fine because we tested that here in the custom connect connector designer, but our response is not working correctly. So let's take a look at what our 200 response looks like. So the body of the response is showing ID and images key item output. Well, that's not quite right. So what should our response be for a 200? 
Well, it should be the same as what happened in our test. So if you need a sample payload and your test is working pro appropriately, then you can just quickly go back over to test, pick your gen generate images action, and then we'll put in another prompt, right? I'll do the same two giraffes wearing top hats in Times Square. And for size, we'll do 512 by 512. We'll hit test. And then what we're gonna do is when this responds, we're gonna grab that response body out. So this is our response body. We're gonna copy that and we're gonna head back over to our definition. And we're gonna change what that 200 response looks like for the generate images. Make sure you click on the action that you want before you do this, but the generate images action. Let's go down here to 200. And let's say import from sample. And then I'm gonna paste in that JSON that I just pulled out of our test response and hit import. And so now what we have is created and URL. And if we look at URL, it's showing that as a string. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out actually, because what we could have if we had more than one image is an array and the schema might change a little bit. I'm actually gonna test that out just to see, right? This is something I can anticipate because I kind of am more familiar with how these things work, but the fact that it's just showing me created an URL makes me think that maybe the schema would change a little bit if we had an array of URLs. So what I'm gonna do is go back to test and try this again, but this time I'm gonna do a in of four. And I'm gonna hit test operation again. Okay, so now our data object here, our data property has, uh, it's an array that has four URL records within it. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. I'm going to head back to my definition. I'm gonna pick generate images again. I'm gonna come down here, import from sample for our response. Import from sample, and I'm gonna paste in that new version. Okay, and hit import. Nothing changed on the surface, still shows the string. So let's just see what happens, All right? I'm gonna hit update connector. Okay, so let's go back to our Power App and let's refresh the OpenAI connector, which I guess it's not gonna let me do that. Let's actually remove it and add it back. So remove it, go to add data, connectors, find my OpenAI YouTube demo and add it in. Okay, and we've got it back. So now let's see how this changed, right? Because we've got an error in here on this generate images uh, function that we're invoking because dot images is no longer available. It's not part of the response schema anymore. It's not something we can extract from what the AI or the API is going to send us back. So now we can get, just get rid of the word images and leave the dot. We may have to put the dot back manually, but if you look now, what we get is dot data. So data we know is that object that has an array of URLs inside of it. Um, for a collection, it wants a table. An array and a table are the same uh, in this instance. And so what we're gonna do is say, yeah, we want dot data actually to make up coal images. So now we're gonna have a, a collection of records with URLs in them. Okay, so let's go try this again. Before we do that, let's update our uh, gallery here. So we've got a red X because dot value doesn't exist anymore. What does? It should be dot URL. And in fact it is. So we'll put dot URL in there. And then let's try this again. Okay. Two cows in a meadow with mountains on a sunny day where one cow is playing the tuba and the other cow is playing the clarinet. Why don't we expand this out a little bit so it's we can see our entire prompt here. We'll say it's multiple lines of text, okay? So there's our prompt. Let's hit generate images and see if our fixes fixed the problem with uh, the connector. All right, and there you have it. So this time the connector worked the way that we expected and it returned these uh, beautiful cows playing uh, woodwinds and horned instruments in this meadow with mountains on a sunny day. Lovely.
lovely robot art there. Okay. So that's the generate images endpoint. Let's quickly try to do the same thing with our text completion endpoint. And we might do a little bit of troubleshooting there because again, right, we had to fix that response schema. ChatGPT didn't get that part right, even though it got other parts of the, the YAML, the swagger, correct? So we're probably gonna have to do something similar with text completion. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm gonna create a new screen here, a new screen, blank. Again, I'm going to just put in, I'm actually gonna just copy what I have over here on screen one from my uh, sort of prompt input. Instead of generating images, I'm going to say complete text, or let's just say generate text. That's kind of what it does. I'm not using it as text completion. I'm giving it a prompt and asking it to write me something back. In this case, I'm gonna throw a label on here. It's probably not the right thing to use, but we can. Move this vertical line up to the top, maybe make this font a little bit easier to read. Make that 25. So what we're gonna do here now is instead of making a collection, we are going to set a variable because I'm only expecting this thing to give me one response back for uh, text completion. Now I could have it give me multiple back, but for this example, remember we've got this in parameter where we can define how many results we want back. For this example, I'm just gonna do one result and I'm gonna set it in a variable. So this shows you another way that you can you know, use this, uh, these endpoints. You can make them into collections if you're getting arrays back from the API, or you can make, set them into variables if you're just getting back a singular string or something like that. So let's pull this out. So for this one, right, we're gonna just, again, we're gonna type in open and we're gonna see our suggestions down here. One of them is uh, openaiapi.textcompletion. That's what we want. And so there it's going to give us the prompt for the schema that it's expecting for the payload. So we have the prompt uh, field and that's gonna be text input one underscore one dot text. The model that we're gonna use is gonna be that DaVinci uh, text dash DaVinci dash 003. And that's gonna be a string. That model field is a string or model property. So we'll put that in. Um, it wants the max tokens, and I believe it was seven. So I'm just gonna hard code that as seven. Again, all of these things are at your disposal to be dynamic, right? Just you have to build that into your app. And then we have temperature, which I'm pretty sure was set to zero in our test. So I'm gonna leave it there. So we've got this, and we know we wanna set the response in a variable. So I'm gonna say set var response. I'm gonna put in my invocation of the text completion endpoint of our connector and put a period there and so then I see dot completions so this is where I think we're gonna have to again make a change to that response schema so let's look back at our custom connector let's go to the test section this time we're gonna test text completion the prompt we're gonna give it is again tell me something about Shakespeare Model is going to be that text DaVinci-03, max token 7, temperature 0. And we're going to hit test. And so down here we have, this is what our schema looks like. It has two nested objects, choices and usage, where usage is just a record and choices is an array of responses. And then we have a few other fields, ID, object, yada, yada. I don't see any of those here. I just see completions and ID. So indeed, we are going to have to update the response schema of um, this particular action. So just like we did last time, we're gonna take the response from our test here, copy that out, and we're gonna go over to our definition. We're gonna make sure that we're on the text completion action. This is the one we wanna update. And we're gonna scroll down to our response. I'm gonna click the 200 response because 200 is success, right? That's, Anytime we get a successful response, then it should have a payload that looks a little bit different than the one chat GPT provided for us in that swagger that it wrote. And then I'm gonna hit import from sample and I'm gonna paste in that sample response that came back. I'm gonna hit import. So now you can see a, a lot more properties came back in the response. I'm gonna update the connector. Okay, my connector's updated 
And just like we did last time, we're gonna have to go back to our app, drop the connector from our app and add it back again so that it can read that new version of the schema. So I'm gonna add it back. And then if I go look up here for the text completion action, I now have uh, the correct um, properties to be referenced. And we know that based on our test, the choices array is what's going to hold any responses that come back from the API. So what I'm gonna do is pick dot choices. Now again, this is, I know this is an array, and if I highlight that, it, it knows it's an array. It shows me it's a table, right? So if it's a table, then I just wanna show in my variable the first record in that table. So what I'll do is just say first dot text. Remember, choices is a nested array. And so inside that choices value, there are other key value pairs. One of them is text. And text is what contains the actual response. It's what we want. It's the, it's the meat of what we want here, right? So I'm going to close that off. So now I'll format this so you can see it easier. Var response is going to contain the dot text value of the first record um, that comes back from our custom connector. So let's go over here and set this text label to be var response. And then what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll say, um, um, give me one cool fact about Reese's uh, candy. I don't know. Generate text. Reese's peanut. Well, that's not that's not very cool. Let's try something different. Um, I, I guess the point is our API call worked, right? But that response was kind of lame. Um, give me a cool fact about Coca-Cola. Well, the API is not doing a great job there, but uh, the fact is our connector worked. So you might have to play around with the model that's being used, the maximum amount of tokens that are being consumed, those sorts of things to get the response that you want. I don't know, but Anyway, the point is the connector works and you, you know, how the API settings are set up, you'll have to play around with that. But I guess we can kind of wrap this thing up now. So let's quickly talk about what all we have done. So when we started this off, we started with nothing. We didn't use Postman, uh, although that's my preferred method. Um, check out another video, I'll put a link for it up here um, where I use Postman to make some calls if you wanna see how that works. Um, so we started out with nothing. We asked ChatGPT to write us a YAML definition for the OpenAI API, which it did after some convincing, right? Some, some iterating on our prompts. We then took that uh, swagger that it wrote and copied and pasted it in to a blank custom connector in the Power Platform. We made some modifications to a couple of the fields we had ChatGPT add in the generate images endpoint for us, and we made some mod modifications to that. And then we tested everything. It was working correctly. Our authentication pieces were working with that bear token. That all worked. But ChatGPT got the response schemas wrong for both the uh, endpoints, both of the paths that it wrote out for us in that swagger. So we had to then go back, run our tests again, grab the response bodies out of those tests, and put them in as sample payloads to generate the correct response schemas for each of our actions for the custom connector. It seems like a lot, and it, and it is, but the fact of the matter is that if you didn't use ChatGPT for this, then you may have been totally lost. This is a really cool API. You know, The point of this video was just to talk about how to make the custom connector. So what you do with it at this point is up to you. I can't wait to see some of the creative things that people you know, come up with using this. Um, leave them down in the comments below if you have something really cool that you've used this for. But anyway, I hope this was valuable. It's, I think it's a cool new approach to building custom connectors in general. Um, if ChatGPT or Copilot has access to previous examples of, say, Swagger files or Swagger definitions for APIs for other services that you're integrating with, then you could potentially borrow from that as well. 
So this isn't just limited to OpenAI, right? Think about this concept in terms of all the APIs that are out there, and it's not gonna hurt to ask ChatGPT if it can help you with these things. That's the lesson I'm hoping that you got out of today's video. Go out there, generate your own API keys, start playing with OpenAI in the context of the Power Platform, and let me know what you think. If you wanna see more content like this, really in-depth technical stuff, leave me a little comment down there below and I'll keep cranking these things out for you. One last thing I wanna mention before we end today's video, if you need help implementing these things in your Power Platform projects, consider reaching out to us at PowerApps911. You can find us at powerapps911.com, uh, which I'll put up there. And then I also put a link over here to Shane Young's uh, YouTube channel. If you haven't watched him, well, uh, then you're missing out big time. Go check those resources out. I'm also gonna put a link in the description for training if you need Power Platform training, not necessarily related to this advanced stuff, though we do have an advanced class that touches on API integrations. So if you need any of those things, PowerApps 911 is your go-to spot for that. I really hope you enjoyed this. Can't wait to see what you do with it. Get out there, make your API key for OpenAI and start playing with this tool. Until next time, this has been Daniel LeMay and Doing It With AI, and thank you for watching. Cheers.